Hey everyone, Steve here at SKS Props, and welcome back to part two of my Harley Quinn mallet build. Welcome to the shop for part two of my Harley Quinn mallet build series. If you did not check out part one, I'll have a link up above and down in the description. That video went over all the different fabrication techniques that it took to put this together, including this awesome wood texture and a fully leather wrapped handle. Well, two millimeter foam leather wrap, but it's good enough for cosplay. Now, since that video, what I've gone ahead and done is I sprayed it with two light coats of Plasti Dip, and the reason you want to do that in layers is so you don't obscure any of the details that you've got going on, especially all the little crinkly bits that I put into the leather using the tin foil technique. After that had fully cured, I then went in with some Rust Oxide Krylon Primer. That is going to be our base that's going to allow all the paints to stick to this properly. Now, we've got a lot to do to paint this thing, so let's go ahead and get started. Now I've got a lot of really cool textures going on with this piece and the first thing I want to do is give it a black wash and to do that I'm going to be using Utrecht brand Mars Black. Using a mop brush a ton of water is added to the paint and that is applied to the surface making sure that it gets down into all the little details. A damp paper towel is used to blot away some of the excess paint and water from the highest points. This paint and water mixture has to be generously applied to the entire piece. It does a couple of things. Number one, because the paint is getting down into the details, it makes everything pop. Number two, it gives a better base for additional acrylic paints to adhere properly. The biggest thing to note at this point is that it is a three-dimensional prop, so I'm constantly rotating it, making sure the paint gets underneath all the little details that I glued on. A hair dryer is used to lock in this layer, and we can start adding our colors. First up, we have Utrecht brand Burnt Sienna. This paint is a heavy body, but it's a semi-transparent, so I don't add any additional water to it. If you notice my mop brush, it's very flared out, and this is going to give it a more organic and stippled look. You want to take this paint and dry brush it over just the highest points of the bark texture. This will start to highlight it. To start my base color at the end of the mallets, I'm going to be using some Liquitex brand Heavy Body Unbleached Titanium. This paint is mixed with the Burnt Sienna that I already have on my palette, which will help give it a more cohesive look. This mixture is also just lightly dry brushed over the highest textures. Pure Unbleached Titanium is used for the next highlight, and notice that I'm watering some of it down to paint in between the cracks of the bark. After these paints have been allowed to dry, we're going to go in with another wash. This time I'm using the Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, and a little bit of Yellow Ochre to put a wash over the entire surface. When it comes to painting a prop, a lot of different layers and color shifts are what makes it look more convincing, especially when it's something organic. After the wash is applied all over the surface, it's also locked in with a hairdryer. The next layer is going to be one of the most versatile paints out there. It's Liquitex brand Heavy Body Raw Sienna. I'm a big fan of this particular color and I use it from everything from leather highlights to rust effects. In this case, we're going to be highlighting the wood bark a little bit more and mixing it with some of the unbleached titanium to give it a final pass. Now I know that looks really white, but we have one more wash, I know. This time we're mixing the Burnt Sienna once again with the Mars Black and just doing a very, very light wash over the entire surface. Actually, this is going to be more water than pigment. It's time to work on our faux leather, and to start off, I'm going to be using Liquitex brand Cadmium Free Red Medium. This paint is mixed in with a little bit of the Mars Black and then applied to the leather wrap at the top of the mallet. While I let that dry, let's go ahead and move on to the handle, and for this, I'm just going to use pure Mars Black. Now if you notice, the paint is not completely opaque, I'm allowing some of that red oxide primer to still show through. The checkered pattern on the handle wrap is planned out, and here I move to a smaller brush just to make sure I'm not getting pigment all over the place. The same mixture of the cadmium red and Mars black that I used at the top of the mallet is also used on the red squares here.
For my highlight layer, I'm going back with a pure cadmium red with no water. I'm almost scrubbing it onto the surface. This technique will give it enough color, but will help it look worn. This same color process is applied to the top of the mallet, but using a larger filbert brush. This kind of a painting technique does require a delicate touch. I want to make sure to have enough saturation of the pigment that it stands out, but I don't want to fill in all of the embossing tinfoil techniques that I'd done earlier. In some areas, I went back and added additional highlights just because oils of the hand would tint the leather differently. Because the strips are 2mm foam, I went in with some small detail brushes and painted all of the raised edges. Harley's logo and all of the rivet heads also received a layer of the Mars Black. Liquitex brand iridescent rich silver was then applied to all the metal sections. The thing to note here is that I'm allowing a lot of that original red oxide color to show through. This will help the entire piece look more cohesive, but also it's more visually interesting than these bands just being silver. So I use a larger brush to paint the tops and sides of all the metal sections, and then I switch over to a detail brush to paint all the little rivet heads. I started off painting a bullseye on the end of the mallet using the original wood color and some of that cadmium red and absolutely hated it. I felt that black would be a better look on the ends for the overall design. And that's the great thing about paint is if you don't like it, go ahead, paint over it. The cadmium free red was used to freehand the rings on the end and a little bit of paint over splash on the sides. Now that additional paint obscured some of the ring details, so I went in with a very small brush and brought those back out. And here we have Harley's mallet, at least my version of it. And I think that's why I enjoyed this project so much is it wasn't just replicating. It was taking an iconic item and putting my own particular spin on it. Maybe that's something that I do a little bit more in the future. And this particular build, I also was really happy with how some of the different textures came out, specifically the wood grain that's up here on the top I mean, this is something reminiscent to what I had done a couple years ago with Stormbreaker, which was successful, but I can definitely tell that I've improved on this technique over the years. Same thing goes with the leather wrap on this handle or foam leather wrap. It still comes off as convincing as a leather weave. And you know, these are the types of techniques that you guys can pick up on and utilize in future builds. And if you guys are enjoying these videos, be sure to give them a thumbs up, share them with your friends and family. And remember, if you're building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag me on Twitter and Instagram because I love seeing your progress. Until next time, thanks for stopping by.